Hello everyone, Ember here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Lost Origin tier list. This is of course a very subjective video, so feel free to disagree or agree with any of the points made. Of course, I would love to hear what you guys think, so be sure to put your opinions down in the comment section. So just to quickly summarize how this tier list works, we have the S tier decks, which are the most broken coming out of Lost Origin. We have A tier, which is kind of what you expect to see the top tables. B tier, which is kind of like the majority of what will be competitive. C tier is kind of pushing into B tier a, a little bit, but often finds themselves in this awkward position where they only cover like a niche amount of matchups, for example. And then D tier is for D don't play really, or don't play now. So these decks could improve again in the future, but they're not really anything you need to kind of worry about, I guess looking at those decks right now. So then E tier is also just E for memes. So E tier doesn't really matter, I guess, but we're all going to talk about the decks in E tier eventually. So looking at A tier is obviously Giratina with the Mirage Gate build. This is for sure going to be the best deck to come out of Lost Origin. I have no doubt about that. It just has everything that, that you would expect from a top tier deck. It has a built-in shred. It has 280 damage output, so you can just run Tool Scrapper if you're worried about big charms on an Arceus, or just, you know, run Choice Spell and Oko them that way. It has a Visto power that lets you take an Oko anyway against any Pokemon. You're not playing any special energy, or at least in the builds I've seen for it, so you don't really have to worry about Drelodon. And you can also play attackers like Sableye and Cramorant, which are one prize attackers in the Lost Origin archetype. So they will essentially give you just good matchups overall, good matchup spread overall, I should say, and allow you to prize trade effectively into three prizes as well. So Giratina, very strong. Gudra is, I'm also putting an A tier. A part of me did want to say, okay, maybe Gudra should actually be on the high end of B tier, but I do think Gudra is good enough to be A tier, to be honest. So if those of you do, quickly don't know what Gudra does or have already forgotten, for 3 energy, which does require metal water color, so we are using Arceus to power them up, does 200 damage, and then it says you take 80 less damage during your opponent's next turn. And there is a Gardevoir, Radiant Gardevoir, coming out in the set that says you can you take 20 less damage from your opponent's Vs, and there's also a Stadium card that says you take 20 less damage if you have any water energy. So you could theoretically take 120 less damage, but if we're just saying for argument's sake we're taking minus 100 on most situations, then... That's still obviously really powerful. It remains to be seen if this ends up being like one of the biggest hitters of the set, but I could definitely see it being an A tier deck for sure. So looking into B tier, we have the Cramorant Mirage Gate deck box. Kind of a style of attackers where you play like Cramorant and then more recent lists have been playing, you know, Radiant Charizard and the Drapion V. This is for sure one of the like the more competitive one prizers I think I've seen in a while. I do think the deck is just better than Radiant Charizard and Talion, which is already really strong. So I have reason to believe this can end up being really good. And then, of course, with Sableye in the Mirage Gate deck, you can also just sweep and clear damage that Charizard would otherwise be unable to reach because Zard's obviously doing 250. And then Sableye can just sprinkle a little bit of damage and Cramorant can therefore clean up as well. So definitely one to bear in mind. Arcanine is another one I have on the high end of B tier with an attack allowing you to do 160 if you have zero card hand. Obviously, this wouldn't be so strong, but we do have cards like V-Barrel around. We do also have cards like the Radiant Venusaur to draw up until you have four at the end of your turn, so there's plenty of ways to make this good, and we have seen something like this in the past with Gramble that was really successful, so I definitely think Hisuian Arcanine will end up being pretty good. Then Hisuian Zarg, V-Star, Gengar. I will say this kind of across the board for Zorak variants, and it's kind of why the other two Zorak variants are in C and D tier, respectively, is I believe Zorak does suffer a little bit from consistency issues, but there is obviously turns where you will just get all the Gengars in the discard pile. You will, you know, pull off the damage pump combo to put damage on your own Zoraks. You'll slap a choice belt on there, and you'll just hit, like, 280 out of nowhere, or even, like, 300 or something crackers like that so i definitely think you know zorak has a lot of potential i just think the gengar variant is for sure the best one it's also like the most consistent as i think is what people are saying as well so 
I definitely think that's the best variant to play Zorak. Kyrim VMAX is another really strong contender. It's kind of like 4 for long and B tier if you're looking for it. 330 hit points is really tanky. It has an amazing ability allowing you to accelerate energy from the top of your deck. It has an impressive attack that will allow you to Oko V stars if you discard all the energy. So it's definitely an interesting partner for Palkia, Ice Rider, and Frostmoth. I am just sort of putting one Kyrim variant on this list because I think all Kyrim variants kind of sit in tier B. I think if there was maybe one variant that sits a bit below the others, it's probably the Frostmoth variant. But um, even, you know, Frostmoth Kyrim is arguably better than Frostmoth Ice Rider or, you know, Frostmoth um, Lapras or whatever. So I definitely do think Kyrim has some solid potential. Looking on a bit, we have the Dugong with the Swim Freely attack. Well, the mainly, the mainly, like the main reason I guess we're interested in Dugong is for the Arctic Return, which does forty damage for each Water and G that you choose to shuffle back into your deck. And then in the same set, there is a Finian that allows you to attach any number of Water Energy cards from your hand to your Swim Freely Pokemon. So the deck honestly just seems a whole lot more consistent than Malamar, which has been very strong in the past. Now, Malamar was obviously better in a three-price Pokemon format, but um, I do think this has a lot of serious potential. Just because with Malamar, you had to maintain your hand size throughout the turn, whereas Dugong, essentially, you can just attach all the energy from your hand using Finian, and then, you know, play a Research or be Barrel and draw into more cards. So I do think Dugong is you know a lot stronger in that respect and can end up being really competitive so props to dugong mcgen zone v star is a one again that i've not seen many people talking about but it's definitely one that's on my radar i think this could honestly be a, a bit of a sleeper hit in, the, in this deck in this format rather i should say um magnetic grip doing 180 and searching a deck for two item cards very very strong attack also just will one it kills a palkia which is very cool and then Electro Star, V Star Power can also snipe two Pokemon on the bench, dealing 90 damage to both of them. So if any of these like smaller Comfrey Giratina kind of engines become popular, or Clefairy becomes popular, or you know even this Spiritomb variant I've got down in C tier, you know Magnet Magenzone has this like awesome support supporting V Star move that can just snipe those Pokemon. So very strong and definitely worth looking out for. Then we have Reshiram Amazing Rare. Um, the only amazing rare I've actually got in B tier, I did think about putting Raikou up here as well, but I think Reshiram is just superior in terms of just an amazing rare damage output. Obviously doing the 270, but for three very awkward energy attachments. Mirage Gate just makes it so much easier with Comfrey and stuff, so I think the Reshiram deck is definitely... If it's going to be good, this is the set, it will be good. If it's not good after this, then, you know, Reshiram is just bad, I guess, but... I do think this is, you know, this is the set that Reshiram could end up being really strong. Obviously, with Choice Spell, you can do 300. So even if your opponent plays down a Radiant Gardevoir, you still Oko their V-Star, assuming they don't have a big charm. So definitely think Reshiram has some serious potential. Giratina V-Star Leafeon honestly isn't that much worse than regular Giratina. I just have it kind of in the low end of B tier because... I just think it's a slightly worse version of Giratina. It just feels slightly more clunky. You do have the Leafeon V though, which allows you to search your deck for Grass Energy on the first turn of your deck, first turn of the game. And after you've used like a couple of Comfries, you just want to end your turn with something, then you know that Leafeon's pretty good. The Leafeon V Star doesn't strike me as like a viable inclusion to the archetype, but it's definitely something to consider further down the line. Especially if, you know, Dark Orion all those kind of dark archetypes do start to pop up more, which they might do because Deoxys kind of being pretty good. So could definitely see an argument for Leafeon V star being worth inclusion. But moving on slightly, we have the Kaferi Mewtwo. Kaferi, I think, is just 10 times better than Shadow Rider Mewtwo and is actually better than Lunar Rock Mewtwo. So that might be a bit of a hard take. Obviously, you can disagree with that if you wish. But um, Kaferi, obviously, just allowing you to search your deck for a Psychic Energy and attach it to each of your bench Kefaris is an ability, so you can you can actually chain these abilities and theoretically get like what 12 energy in play in one turn if you play enough switching cards. So very, very strong ability. And obviously there will be games where you just don't pop off because yeah, you need to run Fog Crystal, you need to run high switching cards. So like high amount of switching cards, I should say. So like there is 
definitely some downsides to Clefairy Mewtwo, but again, I think it could be really strong going into the standard format, and it's definitely going to be the best variant of Mewtwo, at least in my opinion. So Deoxys V-Star, pretty interesting one. Unfortunately, we don't have any strong confirmation that Deoxys will be appearing in Lost Origin in alternate art form. We do, however, know that Deoxys will be in a box, so there is hope, I guess, for Deoxys players. But um, has the ability Protective DNA that allows you to take three less damage from your opponent's V-Star Pokemon. And then its attack does 160 and you get to heal 30. So really strong stats overall. So of course this deck is just trying to put in three or four Deoxys V-Stars, V-Max I should say, in play. And then you'll just take 120 less damage from V-Stars. Very, very strong effect. Obviously Path to the Peak will give you some problems. So you'll have to run stuff like Old Cemetery and whatnot. But um, overall, just a really strong card. You know, if you're taking 120 less, you can start comboing it with Hyper Potion just to heal off all the damage, and definitely prove could prove to be a really strong deck. It, it, it ticks all the boxes for me personally as a strong tanking deck. I do like this, the idea of this more than Stone Journey and Octazol in many ways, just because you still to it kill all the Pokemon, you even heal 30 with your main attack as well. So I do think Deoxys could end up being pretty good, pretty good tanking deck. So just looking at C tier, these are kind of like the decks that could sneak into B tier maybe somewhere down the line, or it could end up being, you know, at least on par with some of the B stuff. And again, these decks are subjective to change. So in my opinion, everything in C tier could end up being just as bad as D tier, but it could also, you know, sneak up into B tier somewhere down the line. So C tier, the first kicking off is a bit sad. Okay, we've got Aerodactyl Mirage Gate. I think Aerodactyl is pure bait, to be honest. Um... The attack, which essentially puts this V-Star, which it uses up your V-Star power, but it also just puts an ability on that Aerodactyl that says, you know, your opponent's V-Stars can't, like, use abilities or something, or, like, they can't use their V-Star power. It seems fine, to be honest. Like, well, not fine. It's great. Like, it's, it's great. The effect is great. But putting an ability on that Aerodactyl is feels really bad after you've used it as an attack because your opponent will just get a free hit on Aerodactyl so no matter what you do for the rest of the game they can just target down that one and just take it out and all of a sudden you've you know you've essentially lost your V-Star power from play which is pretty bad it's also got a main attack which isn't too strong it does 240 for three which theoretically sounds great but it's also pretty bad because you will need modifiers like choice belt zigzagoon and you will also have to mill the top three cards of your deck into the Lost Zone. So I don't think Aerodactyl will end up being that strong. But of course, people will definitely try and play it. Because obviously it does have some kind of one kill potential, I guess. And it will one kill an Arceus, which will never not see play, really. So I do think that Aerodactyl has some good merits. It's just not a B-tier deck for me, personally. So Zacian Arceus, or Zacian Ar Arceus, in going again in C-tier... Wasn't so sure about this one, to be honest, because I'm not seeing a lot of people talking about Zashin anymore. But um, Zashin V-Star does have a really cool merit in that it has a Shred attack, and it also has an attack for 4 energy, does 320 as its V-Star power. So if you can avoid using the Star Birth V-Star power, then you can just have access to this massive one Akira move. To be honest, I think Giratina as a deck just does this strategy way better and has just better options and more plays to do. But Giratina Ar but um not Giratina Arcus, Arcus Zashian could end up being a pretty strong archetype in its own right. Assuming, you know, you can get them going and start doing a lot of damage, I guess. So it could be something worth bearing in mind for the future. Gudra Mirage Gate is meh, to be honest. I'm not sure why you would play Gudra Mirage Gate over Gudra Arcus. Uh, I think the argument here is that. You can use the V-Star power, which you can't really if you opt to use Star Birth with the other deck. And Gudra's V-Star power does allow you to heal all damage from Gudra, which is pretty strong. But the Mirage Gate just feels like a slightly worse engine overall to Arceus. And all you really need to do in Gudra is just accelerate three energies and start swinging. So I'm not sure I'm, I'm really sold on the whole Mirage Gate engine. You do have access to a supporter card that will let you, you know take 120 less damage from attacks if you have 10 or more cards in a loss zone i think it says so there is that option i guess but um i don't think the mirage gate is the best way to play guja but i could be wrong 
So moving on a bit, we have Zorak Heatran. Sort of just Zorak. I say Zorak Heatran. Like you could play Zorak Radiant Zard. I don't think it matters too much which one you play, but Radiant Heatran will give you a nice one to kill option as well. So this is kind of like the Magma Basin version of a Zorak deck. I think this is just worse than Gengar. So it was like not a whole ton of reasons to play it, but I guess if you already have all the pieces for like a Magma Basin deck, then upgrading it to a Zorak variant won't be that expensive. But just kind of bear in mind that I think Gengar will definitely be the superior variant moving forward. Also, if you're running Fire-type attackers, you have to run the risk that you'll be weak to Palkia. So do bear that in mind. So Deoxys V-Star Arceus going on a little bit. Deoxys, again, not really one that many people are talking about, but it does do 190 and then a 60 snipe, and then its main attack does, I think it's 60 for each energy attached to Deoxys, or each energy attached to both active Pokemon, so pretty strong attacks, like it is pretty strong stats, but of course, like, does this actively outclass many other archetypes that we already have with Arceus? No, not really, so um, it's a strange, yeah, it's a strange one should say it's like it's a definitely an archetype that could be good but i'm like not 100 percent convinced you'd also probably run like one or two deoxys v max in that deck just to make use of you know the protective dna ability but um yeah it could be okay could be you know could be decent raikou mirage gate is um another like amazing rare box kind of style deck of course, the uh, Raikou doing 120 and then the 120 snipe is really strong, but then um, we do have to worry about mana fee, so that's why Raikou's in C tier. Ludicolo Tomb, or Ludi Tomb, is a pretty cool archetype. Um, does 10 damage and then 60 more for each Spirit Tomb in your disco pile. Then its main ability says if Spirit Tomb was knocked out, you can search your deck for any card that you want. So, really strong, actually, in a very thin Ludicolo line deck because, like, theoretically, you're not playing like high maintenance attackers, you know, Spirit Tomb himself only needs two dark energy, and you don't need Ludicolo every turn, obviously, so you want to go for like two Akios in the early game, and then there will be a few turns where you can just Oko like an Arceus or a Giratina out of nowhere with Ludicolo. And because of how unpredictable Ludicolo is, you can also just like catch your opponent off guard and threaten this play whenever you want, really, so, you know, Giratina players will have to be more careful with their God of Wars and whatnot, so... Definitely could be an interesting one prizer and could end up seeing a lot of play, but um, yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes with Ludi too. Urshi Mirage Gate is kind of like Urshi. Well, the thing is with Urshi Mirage Gate, right, is you can do all the plays that Urshifu Medichan already can do, but you gain access to you know another Lost Zone one prize attacker in the form of Kremrand, and you also gain access to the fact that you're only using basic energy you know you wouldn't play rapid strike energy i don't think in the mirage gate engine so you can just make full use of the fact that you can play basic energy and just go into draladon and like not be too bad like admittedly draladon can probably out tank your damage so it'd have to be you know have to do some testing against draladon to see if urshifu can actually keep up but it is worth paying attention to and definitely worth mentioning so I'm not sure if Oshi Mirage Gate is actually like the main focus. You know, it's definitely not the main focus of Lost Origin, but it could be, you know, an archetype that people look into in the future, I guess. Then we have Gengar Drapion V Star. I think this is the best way to play Drapion V Star, honestly. Drapion V Star has a V Star power that essentially burns, poisons, and paralyzes your opponent's active Pokemon. Gengar naturally does 250. So if you're doing 250, you can just pop the V-Star power, do 280, and Oko a V-Star. That's kind of like the main appeal with this card, I guess. And then even with a choice belt, you know, you can for sure reach high damage output. And also your damage is not being negated as special conditions. Of course, this is a one per, per game action, so to speak. But um, definitely not a bad move for sure. Definitely not like a bad, you know, deck to watch out for. So I think this could be pretty cool, in a, at least in a Gengar archetype. So Blissey v Gudra, that's Isuian Gudra. The Isuian Gudra says any of your Pokemon with metal energy attached to them take no damage from your opponent's Pokemon Vs. So how this is possible in the Blissey deck is you play like a couple of copies of Dream Ball, and then you essentially pull Dream Ball off the prizes and you put in, you know, Gudra off out of the deck. Then Gudra, well Blissey, essentially has the exact stats of a mill tank effectively like you take no damage from these until your opponent bosses and one it kills your gudra so 
could be a pretty annoying arch archetype, but I don't think it will be substantially better than Blissey, which is already, you know, a tier B deck effectively. So, yeah, just just a one to bear in mind, I guess. Drapion V, Radiant Charizard, this kind of like one prize Charizard deck, I guess. Well, not really one prize if you're playing Drapion, but you know, this kind of like Aurora Box style, a bunch of attackers in C tier again. I'm not sure if this is like worthy of B tier, maybe. Like it could be on the low end of B tier or the high end of B tier, but um, definitely not the worst archetype in the world. I just think that the the straight Lost Origin variant with Cramorant and Mirage Gate is just superior. So we'll have to see how that goes, though. So moving on to D tier or for D don't play, we have Turbozacian. To be honest, I don't see this deck being better than Turbo Dialga or the. Sashian Arceus Varen, so definitely don't think that will be very good. The Rotom V Star, I don't think is very good either, just because it's it's just not doing enough damage to be honest. Like it's sending tools from the Disco Pile into a Lost Zone, and then you have a Porygon which does more damage for each tool in your disc in your Lost Zone, I should say. So like there is a little a little bit of potential, I guess, but I don't think Rotom is particularly great and could definitely be moved down to the meme tier even, so yeah, F in the chat for Rotom, but I don't think it's that good. Lucario Mirage Gate is another one that I'm, like, not so sure about. I think it could be potentially better than Deoxys V-Star as a card in general, just because its main attack and its V-Star power are exceptionally strong. But Lucario never really has had, like, a good way of accelerating energy bar Arceus, but no one wants to try that. It's also got Dobrotober and Gutsy Pickaxe, but again, they're not very good options, so... Seeing Mirage Gate around might prove to be, you know, the crucial piece for Lucario. So, kind of seeing more Lucario in the future. So, Zorok not really doing anything with Lucario. I thought this would just lump this in as the Gape Draw Bulk deck. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this deck. I mean, yeah, it can sort of have weakness heading into these, like, weak to fighting decks, such as, you know, Megan Zone V Star and Arceus, but. And I guess other Zorak variants, but I'm not not a big fan of Lucario Zorak, so I don't expect that to be very good. Deoxys V Star, and then Heatran V Max, Zashian V Star, and in some some extents, Hooper V with Mirage Gate. All these like Mirage Gate variants, I'm kind of like grouping them together right now because they all kind of do more or less the same thing. They are still using the Comfrey Mirage Gate engine. They're just more interesting ways, I guess, of powering up these attackers, and these could be pretty vital, you know, into making them consistent or good. For example, the Heatran. Yeah, Heatran doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but has an ability that lets you heal 50 from it if you have a statement in play. Some people theorized, okay, maybe this could be good with Basin, but the problem with Basin is, is that you're very stadium reliant, whereas with Mirage Gate, you're not stadium reliant, you can just kind of power through your deck with Comfries and then boost up a Heatran in one turn, then you could use, like, even, you could even use, like, the Lost Zone Stadium if you wanted to, so I definitely think that, you know, Lost Zone Heatran is definitely the way to go. There's also Vizashian that does 1, 150, and then 300 if your opponent has a VMAX. Could be fine, could be okay, you know. Certain matchups, however, it's, it's obviously going to be dependent on what you faith play against, so not so sure I, I like it above the, the rest around for sure. Then Zero Aura V Star isn't really bringing anything to the table, so I'm just kind of like slotting it into D's tier. Eternatus V Max has has had a ropey time, I think, recently in the TCG. Hasn't really done a whole lot, but Sneasler will allow you to do an extra two points of poison damage. It also means Eternatus has an actual radiant Pokemon it can use. So could be okay actually with Galarian Slow Slow Bro V, I think it is, that does a little bit of poison damage, then Radiant Sneasler will obviously take it to poison 30, so. I could definitely see this bringing, breathing some new life into Eternatus, even if it's very brief or non-existent, but um, definitely not something that's worth writing off. I just think there are better dark decks available right now, so a bit of a shame for Eternatus, but um, we'll have to see how it goes. Then, of course, the Hoopa V just kind of acts as a dark type or a psychic type, allowing you to Oko a Mew or an Urshifu, which is pretty appealing, to be honest. So I'll definitely watch out for Hoopa V, just kind of like... Maybe not being its own deck as such, but, you know, appearing in these other Mirage Gate decks that can afford to run Dark Energy. So, we we'll definitely keep that in mind. E tier for memes. I just have a bunch of stuff in here that's kind of like, you know, if you want to try some memes out, it's fine. Trevenant doesn't take a... Um, Trevenant essentially 
doesn't give a prize if your opponent active knocked it out and it was a V Pokemon. Shiftry can do 210 for one grass energy, but you have to send it to the Lost Zone. The champ does a lot of damage, but it also gains 300 HP, to be honest. If it's, you know, if it's, you know, if your opponent has like three or less prize cards remaining, so Machamp's pretty poggers, but you know, a bit of a meme because of the stage two, of course. Some Flora can do a lot of damage for a twin energy. Kingdra is kind of in here as the alternate swim freely deck, but I think it's just significantly worse than Dugon. Radiant Sneasler, Galea, and Weezing could be okay, but um, yeah, not too much of a fan of that archetype, to be honest. Doesn't seem to be doing enough damage. There's also an Assyrian Electrode, but you're reliant on Parasect, which is stage one. And then, of course, then Scorch Marge Gate, I think just, it's just a bit bad, to be honest. I think it's just worse Blissey, so yeah, that will kind of do it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If there's any placements you would change or, you know, anything you would change around. Do let me know, and um, hope we see you next time. Thank you for watching.